20 years. I own the EOS 3 and the EOS R and they were introduced almost exactly to the month, 20 years apart. EOS 3, 1998, EOS R, 2018. Once I realized this, I thought, what a change the photography world has gone through in those 20 years. And I thought, how much fun would it be to have a look at that and talk about how our world has completely changed in that time. Let's talk about it. All right, well, these two cameras are very different. Having said that, when you look at them, you can tell the lineage, right? From, from EOS 3 till today, it's still very much a Canon camera. When people compare cameras, the first thing they usually talk about is image quality. Well, we can't do that here because the EOS 3 is film and the EOS R is, of course, mirrorless digital. So there's no real clear cut way in spite of the 10 million videos that are on the internet, there's no clear cut way to compare film and video in my opinion. So I'm not even gonna try and do that. What I wanna talk about in this video is the photography landscape, what it was like back then, what it's like compared to today. And that's just a lot of fun when you see how much has changed in that time. When the EOS 3 was introduced, it was kind of the last of its line, maybe the EOS 1V was. Um, they were the pinnacle of film photography. These cameras had all the features, and if you, use, uh, if you use any of the 5D series, you'd be right at home using the EOS 3. The EOS 3 is absolutely built like a tank, and it weighs like a tank, too. Uh, every feature that's built in, you can feel it when you pick the camera up, believe me. But there's a reason for that. It could go anywhere. It could survive almost anything. The EOS 1V was the top. It was the pro camera. It, you know, it had all the much more weather sealing, but <laughs> the EOS 3, it, it could handle it. And I've been using this EOS 3 myself for 12 years, and I, I bought it used, and... It still seems new. It can run rolls of film through it all day long. The EOS R was the first of its kind from Canon. It was their first full frame mirrorless. It was the first to have the RF mount lenses. The EOS 3 has the EF mount lenses still the same way that we have the ability to use the EF today. Uh, with the RF, you have to use the adapter, but no big deal. The, the 5D series and most of the other cans still use the EF, so the EOS 3 has lens compatibility. The EOS R broke new ground with mirrorless. It was Canon's first full frame mirrorless, and I still think of it as a tentative flagship camera. It was the only one they had for a good while, so it had a sort of mix of features in it that the the cameras they do today, they really separate features, like some channels say the Canon cripple hammer. <laughs> I'm really a fan of that term. I think it's really appropriate. It, they deliberately segment features for what they think someone will buy a camera for. That's the landscape we have today. In the EOS 3's time, it was all about the usability because your image quality was defined by your film. The camera itself didn't define the image quality, it defined how well you got an image to the film. The film itself was the equivalent of today's sensor, so it was, it was sort of the great equalizer. Today you have things, stupid things in my opinion, like megapixel wars and all that. It's like talking about the wrong thing. The landscape with that is really different too. Back in the day when the EOS 3 came out, we talked about emulsions. We still talked about film emulsions, which was a whole different discussion. And believe me, could get pretty deep too. It made a huge difference in your photography. You had film manufacturers making different films and it was exciting in a different way. When you buy a digital camera today, you've got what you've got. That sensor is built into it. In my opinion, that's why camera discussions have gotten so crazy because you're really, comparing what we used to do with film emulsions with sensors. It's really different in that perspective. 
So what's it like to use these two cameras side by side in 2022? Well, I'm used to the EOS 3, so it's definitely comfortable for me. Having said that, the EOS 3 again was born in an era when the, the very paradigm of photography was different. In order to do photography with most cameras, at, at least with any pro level camera, it had to be up to your eye. You had to look through a viewfinder. I'm going to confess, I love looking through pure glass. It's a thing of beauty. But that is not the case today. So right there, you've got this tremendous split between how these cameras are to use. When the EOS 3 was created, because you had to keep your eye up to the viewfinder, the control layout was everything. And you photographers who have done this for a long time know what I mean. When you put your hands on a camera that's well designed back from that day and put your eye up to the finder, all your fingertips are on all the controls you need. F-stop, shutter speed, ISO. You can do it without taking your eye away. That was years and years of development to get cameras that could really do that well. And the EOS 3 is definitely no exception. When you just grab the camera, put your fingers in position and put it up to your eye, you don't have to move, you don't have to change anything. You can make any adjustment you want while looking at your subject. 20 years, paradigm shift. You no longer have to put the camera up to your eye. This has changed how you can do photography tremendously. And it's given us tremendous freedom. As much as I love film, the freedom for the kind of portraits I do with this screen, that flip out screen that you can hold that camera at any angle you want. Hey man, that's a big deal. And that's a huge advance in the freedom of expression with photography and the kind of photography you can do, honestly. I mean, there's some things you can do with that flip up screen that you could do it with the other one, but it, it was hard and it wasn't fast at the very least, right? So that was a big difference. I mean, you're doing photography in two different ways. My grandkids don't understand looking through a viewfinder. <laughs> when I bring out one of my old cameras, they look at the back, right? I'm sure you've seen this. and. Can't blame them. It's, it's the generation they were born in. Things are really different today. One other thing that's really different is focus. Now the EOS 3 was autofocus and it was really bad to the bone autofocus. In fact, it gave my 5D Mark III a run for its money. It doesn't have quite as many points, but once again, with the two thumb wheels, when it's up to your eye, you can move any point you want really fast. Worked the same way as the 5D series. The EOS R, oh no baby, we're in another whole world now. This thing detects eyes, detects faces. It's got, I don't even know how many points it's got. You can't compare the two. Apples, apples and oranges there. This is a different world of autofocus. Again, definitely for the better because it frees you. I no longer have to worry about focus when there's a face in the screen. I'm a portrait artist, right? If not having to worry about focus when there's a face in the screen or a three-year-old running across, yeah, that's a big deal. So 20 years, darn good progress. So another thing you have to remember about the eras when these two cameras were created is how we view images. There has been, to put it mildly, a revolution in digital imagery since then. And I don't mean the creation of it, I mean the viewing of it. You spend the day doing this now, right? Not a bad thing. Definitely not a bad thing, guys. But again, a huge paradigm shift. When the EOS 3 was created, you had shoeboxes full of small prints that a lot of people created, home photographers, right? but it was still largely print based. Sure, the internet was around and sure, of course, there was images on the internet, but not so many and not so personal. I've seen, and I, I, I should have looked this up before I did this video, but the exponential growth of digital imaging and the end is nowhere in sight because we carry these phones around with us and other handheld devices you view far more images digitally today than you do printed images. The EOS 3 was 
designed to go to print. It was an analog medium. It started on a piece of film, chemically, and actually back in the day, it ended on a piece of paper, chemically. Today, it's not done the same way, but not in EOS 3's day. I mean, EOS 3 was right at the end when they were transitioning, right? It was like that, that last jumping off point before everything, the digital revolution really hit. And so, what it was intended to do, what it was expected to do was different than what's expected today. The, the fact that I'm recording this on my EOS R was not even a concept back in the day when the EOS 3 was born. The, the fact that I would use an SLR, DSLR, mirrorless to do what I'm doing didn't exist. I mean, it, it just didn't. So we have had this, again, I keep saying this, there's a paradigm shift. And, and in only 20 years, one of the things I'm trying to wrap my head around is only 20 years. To some of you, that may seem like a long time. To me, it's not that long of a time for such a huge change. Today, we have an embarrassment of riches of these cameras that we take for granted. These things are just works of art technologically. The images they create are stunning. And it, it, it's what I want to go back, certainly not professionally. Um, <laughs> there is no substitute at the end of a session for knowing that you have the images and not have to worry about going to a lab and say, did I get them? Or any of you wedding photographers out there having to put film into a lab after a wedding? Don't miss that. So yeah. Definitely. As much as I love the old tech and you'll hear me talk about it a lot, I wouldn't trade it. There's no way, right? I mean, what it allows us to do today is a growing frontier in photography and I love it. I like that, that we still have a film movement. I think it's great that we have a film movement because it's our heritage as photographers and you can appreciate what we have today much more by understanding where we came from. And that's really what I did this video about, to show just in just 20 years, everything that has changed between the birth of these two cameras. And wow, can you imagine what the next 20 years are gonna look like? It boggles the mind. Hey, I've done some other videos on cameras if you wanna take a look at it. I hope you do. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, cheers. <music>